What's up, guys? Today, we are going to be ranking the top 10 crew members as part of your crew formation in Infinite Galaxy. Let's get into it. All right, so today we are going to be ranking the top 10 crew members in Infinite Galaxy, but this is actually part one of a two-part video series because there are two different ways to evaluate the crew members. You can evaluate them both as a member of your crew formation and as a captain of a ship. So for this video, we're going to be focusing on ranking them as members of your crew formation. And in the next video, we're going to focus on ranking them as captains for your ship. I'm also going to be putting more of an emphasis on combat bonuses as opposed to some of the other bonuses like repair speed or spaceport construction or things of that nature. And the general idea behind that is if you're winning more fights, you will have more access to better resources. You won't need as many repairs. Uh, and otherwise, it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. So we are going to weight combat a little bit more favorably because at the end of the day, the way to conquer the galaxy is with brute force. So yeah, that is why we're giving combat a more heavy weighting. But having said that, let's get into the rankings. All right, coming in at number 10, we have Greg Lee. Greg, if you remember, unfortunately dies in the story, and it turns out that that's not much of a loss. Uh, the two buffs that he's providing as a member of your crew formation, he is giving repair speed up and all resources gather speed up. And I, you just hope not to need to do a lot of repairing. I would focus on just winning your fights instead and therefore needing fewer repairs. So for that reason, Greg gets the number 10 spot. All right, coming in at number nine, we have Bolt. And I really want to like Bolt. He's got an awesome dog. He's the only one who bothered to bring a pet on board. So I really want to like Bolt. But unfortunately, he's just not that good. If you look at the buffs that he's bringing to you as a crew member, uh, he's got ships need repair limit bonus. So for some of the same reasons that we docked Greg, you just want to avoid having to do a lot of repairs in the first place. And he also gives planet development all resources, which that is nice for sure. But uh, once you have multiple fleets, you'll be gathering from multiple sources, not just planets. So but for that reason, Bolt gets the number nine spot. Coming in at number eight, we have Ashim Rich. And Ashim is a, a bit of a tricky one. Technically, he does offer some combat functionality. At max, it's 162.3% flagship HP. However, your flagship is not the bulk of your fleet. Your flagships are usually the last thing standing anyway. So your flagship having a little bit of extra staying power, it's typically not going to actually wipe out much on its own. And then the other buff that he's providing is spaceport construction, which while nice, and he does provide a significant amount of it, doesn't help you in a flight at all. So for that reason, Ashim is number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have Laura. Laura was very, very strong at the launch of the game, uh, but I think her value has fallen off dramatically. She brings two buffs to your crew as a member of your formation. She's 108.2% flagship attack at max. And while that is, again, a good amount of flagship attack, ultimately the rest of your fleet is going to be doing a lot more work than just your flagships. You don't want to rely on them. They are not a significant bulk of your damage. So she definitely gets stock some points for that. And then her other buff that she's providing is an increase to research speed, which again, doesn't really help you in a fight. So for that reason, Laura comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six, we have Molly Mayer. I really, really like Molly, and she does rank a bit higher on the other list that we're about to get to. But as for being an actual member of your crew formation, she is giving 32.5% total warship HP, which is nice, but she only backs that up with warship build speed, which isn't as helpful. And then as far as her distribution of her points towards your tree, uh, she's heck primary and combat secondary, which is certainly not bad, but definitely better if they're combat primary. And then I would even argue that command as a secondary may be a bit more useful than tech. But either way, uh, for this reason, we have to give Molly number six. Coming in at number five, we have Bruno Augustine. Bruno is completely combat focused and he does bring 21.7% total warship attack at max which that is undeniably good. However, it is not a large amount. Now he bolsters that with an additional 65% missile attack. The only problem there is that if we're looking at total endgame, the only ships that are going to be using missiles are going to be destroyers. And right now destroyers are the weakest of the three warship types currently in the meta. So while he does provide a nice offensive boost, 
to a destroyer heavy fleet, unfortunately, that just in itself is not particularly strong in the late game. So for that reason, Bruno is number five. Coming in at number four, we have Rubia Von Heesen. And I quite like Rubia, both her aesthetic and the buffs that she provides. She is pretty good. I mean, we're talking, she's already inside the top five crew units in the entire game. Uh, so the reason she is number four, she brings 64.9% total warship shield and backs that with 65% total warship armor. So this is just really, really good defensive stats. And while I would argue that offense is valued a little bit more heavily with the way the game is currently structured, still adding a nice defensive boost to all your warships is definitely a big plus, which is why she takes the number four spot. Coming in at number three, we have Yiling Ding, and arguably silly name aside, I think as far as the look that the character has, she has one of my favorite looks as far as all the crew members, and then the buffs that she brings are undeniably pretty strong. A Yilling is bringing 32.5% total warship armor and shield in addition to 32.5% total warship HP. So again, still very defense focused. However, all of those stats combined make any fleet considerably tankier, not to mention that her primary stat she's gonna be contributing towards in your stat tree is combat followed by logistics. So yeah, she is just really, really strong as a member of your crew will make your crew considerably tankier, buffing three stats at once. So yeah, easy choice for number three. Coming in at number two, Paul Malthus. Uh, until recently, Paul was number one. He is an incredibly good member of your crew. In particular, he is bringing 32.5% total warship HP, but more importantly, 193.2% frigate armor. So while frigates are currently the second best warship in the current meta, there are a lot of really defensive structured fleets, especially with the introduction of new flagships like the Poseidon that allow you to play very, very defensively and adding a ton of HP and just an insane amount of armor to already the most armor heavy warship in the game. Paul was an easy, easy choice for the number two spot and is hands down the top choice for a defense minded fleet. And finally, coming in at number one, the newcomer, Pearson McConnell. I'm a big fan of this unit in particular. He is bringing an additional 1,391 fleet leadership limit at max, and that is to all of your fleets. So that's just a nice power boost. That's, if I had to estimate, it's probably around 250 to 300,000 additional power to any fleet in the end game. And then he is also bringing 54% kinetic weapon attack, which is just a tremendous amount of offense, especially if you are, of course, using a predominantly kinetic weapon fleet. And so while cruisers are currently the meta, there isn't a captain that, or, or a crew member rather, that sits on your crew, who happens to be legendary quality and providing a heavy amount of laser, but you can absolutely deck out a lot of your cruisers in kinetic. And if you're still running tier nine or tier seven cruisers, they will be kinetic as well. Kinetic weapons are just very, very effective. So uh, him giving increased leadership and a really big boost to your kinetic offense for me, makes him the rank one. But all right, so there you have it. All of the legendary crew members ranked according to how valuable they are as members of your crew formation. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with these rankings? Do you disagree? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Having said that, thank you very, very much for checking out this video. Stay tuned for part two, which should be coming out tomorrow, where we're gonna rank all of the legendary crew members as captains for a flagship. And until then, I will see you guys real soon. Thank you guys very much. Peace.